I'm Travis. I'm from Windham. This is my son, my six-year-old son, Xavier. Um, speaking of Europe not working for the Europeans, um, the, the biggest story in the world today is one that debate moderators are talking about, and that is the meltdown in the Eurozone. Um, you know, this is a, this is a story that, that we don't have our, uh, our arms around very well, but, you know, if, if things go sideways, in a month, we could be in a global depression. Um, so, you know, a lot of people are looking to you as our next president for your expertise in economics and in finance. What would you be doing right now to insulate at least the United States from the effects of, uh, of the possible collapse of the Eurozone? Yeah, the, the best thing we can do, well, there, there are a number of things, but the best thing we can do is to continue to make sure that our institutions, our financial institutions, are stable. That, uh, that our banks and so forth don't have excessive uh, exposure to the, uh, to the debt of nations like Greece and Italy and others that are in trouble. Um, but, the, but in my view, having a strong and robust U.S. economy, making, making sure that people who are thinking of expanding do so in this country, it insulates us to the extent possible. But recognize that if, if the worst happens in Europe and they have a, a financial collapse there and banks go bankrupt there, that there will be contagion. That, that, that there will be banks here that have debt or interests and in banks over there, and those, those banks here will be hurt. And there will be some who are so anxious to protect themselves from, uh, uh, from criticism that they'll want to take tax dollars here to try and save banks here that have been exposed to that foreign debt, and maybe even some foreign banks. They'll try and help them. And they'll try and paper this over to the extent they can. That's the wrong way to go, in my opinion. Europe is big enough to solve Europe's problems. We don't have to get into bailout European banks or U.S. banks that have exposed themselves to the troubles in Europe. I, I want I, the right thing for us is to care for us. And, and if, we, if we have some institutions that get in trouble, they're going to have to go through reorganization, which is another word for bankruptcy, and come out the other end and restructure, maybe merge with other institutions. But the idea of taking more money for borrowers, borrowing more money again. I mean, if, if, we had, if we had piles of gold somewhere, all right, if we had all this extra surplus money, well, we might think about that, but we don't. The idea of just borrowing and borrowing, it's, it's creating for us what's happening to them. That's what I hope people recognize. As we, as we keep borrowing, this year we'll borrow $1.2 trillion more than we take in. This number, a trillion dollars. I don't know who told the president that number. This is, uh, I mean, he used to, I mean, he was critical of President Bush when, when, when the number was a, was a fraction of that amount for the borrowing. And, and, and now he's b borrowing a massive amount more. This, he, he's borrowed, by, by the end of, of his, uh, his term, he will have borrowed as much as all the prior presidents combined. This is, this is just, this cannot go on. So I, I will not be out there borrowing money to try and save individual banks that might get in trouble by virtue of their exposure to Europe. I instead will make sure that America is seen as being stable with a sound currency, a sound balance sheet, which is on track to have a balanced budget, and that will mean, I, Xavier, you can clap anytime you want to. I like that. <laughs> that will mean that will mean that, uh, uh, that that people around the world bring their resources here and invest here. That will put Americans to work and strengthen our economy. Thank you.